Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode, we came back to Albion. Finally, since there's a lot to do here. Things have just been building up quests that need to be continued here. So let's do it. There's a lot to do even just in London. Biggest of which is our ambition. We've been told that the Earnest Agitator might be in London. Ambition, the House of Jude. St. Jude's is a new sequence church in the lower poor levels of London. So just a reminder if you've forgotten, remember the Earnest Agitator, we've found out that we can be pretty certain that they were chased by the fire that follows because they learned things that the stars didn't want them to know. And that's what their house being all like burned was all about. Uh, I guess it finally tried to kill them. I guess, um, should I do that first? Yeah, yeah, let's go do it. The new sequence preach glories of the clockwork sun, that it will overwrite the old order of the cosmos and establish a new age. Inside, tall windows admit shafts of sunlight. By the time it penetrates the smog that chokes the lower layers, it's smoky and yellow and purgatorial. Speak to the priest. He's recently finished a sermon. Now he's making his way around the church, putting out the candles with a copper snuffer. When you tell him that you're looking for a friend, he puts the snuffer down. Ah, and you think your friend might have come into my care? Very well, you may come and see. He leads you to the sacristy, and then down a steep flight of steps to an area under the church. I must warn you, we are a modest concern. We keep our guests as comfortable as possible, but all of them have a strong preference for isolation. Unsurprising, I suppose. Whoa, what is this? Blue flame? Creepy eyes? That looks like the fire that follows. Beneath the church is a small corridor with rooms on each side. Their doors are barred on the outside. Is the earnest agitator behind one of them? Wait, they're barred on the outside? Meaning they're prisoners? Open the first door, second, or third. Let's start with the first. Behind it, a tiny room, a bed, a chair, a basin and a chamber pot. A figure wrapped in a blanket shrinks from the light. The vicar raises his lamp. I'm sorry, my child. It will only be for a moment. Its light reveals a lean, bearded man. His arm is outflung against the light, every inch of his skin covered in script. You can't help but read some of it. I never loved Mary. I never loved any of them. I told the constables that John was the knifeman. Robertson didn't die in an accident. Our supplies were gone, we were far from home, and we were hungry. They're scarred with their own secrets, the priest says as he closes and bars the door. Open the second door. Don't come in, a woman's voice cries from behind it. Meg grits her teeth. Sorry, I have to know. A woman burrows into the bedsheets as the door opens, but Meg pulls the blankets back. A wide-eyed, frantic face shrieks at you, scrawled with its own secrets. It's impossible not to read them. I knew. I knew and said nothing. I didn't go back for Sergeant Christie. I was afraid. It is not the earnest agitator. The woman climbs to her feet. Look then, she spits, spreading her arms to show you her guilt. The fire doesn't burn flesh. It reveals the soul. I hope it finds you. I hope it finds you and brands you with everything you hope to hide. Sorry. Third door. Is your friend behind this one? She is not. Instead, a straggle-haired man looks dully up at you, blinking in the light. His skin is scribbled with a horrendous catalogue of crimes, one half of which would see him imprisoned, the other half hanged. He doesn't try to hide them. When you have no secrets left, he says in an incongruously rich baritone, the courtesy will come. 
He grins, and you see the sins engraved on his teeth. Whoa. Leave St. Jude's. The Ernest Agitator is not here among the victims of the fire that follows. Is that a good thing? I don't know. The vicar is clearly unsure whether this is good news or bad. If your friend finds her way to us, I will contact you. The vicar promises as he shows you out. But I must warn you, these are broken souls. Their exposed secrets make them pariahs from the lives they led, and make founding new lives impossible. Their days are easier hidden in the dark, tended by a stranger. Make grunts. As she passes the collection plate by the door, she drops a fistful of gemstones into it. Better get back to New Winchester, she says. She seems disinclined to talk. I have once again learned something I should not. I wonder if the fire that follows is going to come for me once again. Return back to New Winchester. Well, I just came from there and there's a lot to do in Albion, so I'm going to wait on that. Right. Well, what else is there to do here? I guess we don't have that much to do in London other than that. I already hired crew. I switched out my um, secret compartment stuff for the, the better things and repaired my ship and all that. Um, oh, visit the stalwart bookkeeper. Deliver my poor reports. Have two. Can trade gratitude for invitation, unlicensed charts, Sabbath secret. I don't really need any of those things. But I do want to be of use to the new street line, and I want to meet with the fierce philanthropist again. Because I think we finished that quest. The person we were trying to get off of Brabazon Workworld. Pretty sure. Yeah, what would you like me to do? Did I not finish the quest? I'm not sure. I'll have to just my check my quest log. What about chat with the bookkeeper? How can I be of use to you? Oh, that's just where it says delay report reports. Right. Okay. What's the firebrand conductor all about? Oh, this is the person we need to talk to about who exactly we're supposed to smuggle. Yeah, agree to smuggle a passenger. Absolutely. Collect a passenger from Eagle's Empyrean. Deliver them to Port Prosper. Yeah, that's going to have to wait a while, too. I guess that is it for London. Let me figure out where I want to go next. I know what I want to do. I want to try to find the Well of the Wolf. So I can continue, finally continue, the Repentant... Repentant Devil? That's her name, right? Yeah, continue the Repentant Devil's quest. So, apparently it is an Albion, and I've just missed it, thinking it's the storm that speaks. I guess I just kind of heard it from afar making noise and just avoided it. And I think its location is somewhere, like, here. I think. So I'm just going to go search for it. I've already explored, like, all of Albion, so I'll just cut that part out until I find it. Hmm. I've detected something ghastly here. That might be it. Oh. Oh no, that's a weft of time. Actually, we need to go into a weft of time for the Fortunate Navigator's quest. Remember, we need to throw their friend on a journey through time as their final burial. All right, let's go. You have strayed into a place where the weave of time is frayed. The sky groans. The borders that separate past and future crumble and your engine is dragged in. Allow myself to be pulled in. Barry, the navigator's friend. 
This will transform the fortunate navigator into the stalwart navigator, a first officer who increases your iron by 10, your affiliation establishment by 1, and your affiliation bohemia by 1 as well. I'm not, I don't think I'm using them right now, so changing their stats isn't going to like potentially hurt me or anything. Let's do it. You must be quick. Slide the body out of the exterior hatch into the snarling collision of time. The navigator insists on doing the deed himself. Alton's body hangs for a moment just outside the hatch. Then his left shoulder is caught by flailing time and the corpse is drawn away from the engine. The navigator watches his friend be snatched away. Whenever he is, he is not now. He turns to you. Thank you, Captain. Now, let's find our way out of this tumult. His promise is discharged. He has changed. I'm glad we finally took care of that. It was obviously something that's been hanging over their head for a long time. The navigator's friend has been given a fitting burial. Right, so we still need to leave. <laughs> If you escape, you will lose whole and gain terror, uncanny specimens, and munitions. That's fine. It's only a 66% chance of success, though. But let's try to escape. Yes! You force your way through the battle to the bridge, ordering an evasive maneuver that casts off your attacker and sends you thundering from the weft. Your engine's scars remain, along with the rounds that had been freshly loaded into the guns, and several of your aggressor's talons blasted from it in the fray. Oh yeah, what exactly was attacking us? Your engine heaves, throwing you to the floor, a shrill shriek of rending steel. Something is gutting your engine, great claws prying apart the hull. Is this past, future? Oh, that's probably one of the, um... I keep forgetting the names of the enemies. Were they, were they called like an unending or something? You know the things that go invisible when you don't shine a light at them and come out of the clots of night? Got two crates of carefully packed munitions. Six tear, that's not a big deal. Two and Kenny specimens, that's nice. Quite a bit of hull damage, but it's alright. Got a lot of hit points. The ship's old. Looks all weird through the fuzz of that distortion. Okay. Um, I think I want to go to the floating parliament. I know we have something to do there. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I definitely have something. Just stalking at the floating parliament. Don't remember what I have to do here. Do I have another will of the people? Can I fail at making another law? Also got the small prospect. Emphasis on small. It's three crates of munitions. It's really not much. Oh, they gave me a bonus moment of inspiration. That alone was worth it. Deal of literature. Heck yeah. People's perpetual protest. Scone on the lawn. Reduce my terror. Oh, right. This is the nice option for letting one of the cats out. Right? I'm pretty sure that's the nice option, not the bad option. Let me just double check. Convince them to leave by taking him to the floating parliament. Yes, that's the good option. Let's do that. Accompany the feline eccentric and Belleth to watch a session of the house. There is still a public gallery in Parliament, though it's little used and thick with dust. Belleth perches on the rail that divides it from the floor and watches curiously. It takes some time to work out that the members of Parliament are arguing over whether the House's lunch hour should routinely be at twelve or at one. The discussion is a passionate one. There are references to Hastings, to Waterloo, to Cromwell. One MP threatens to tear up the Magna Carta. To them, words are weapons of war, deployed like flights of arrows to wither a rival's reputation. 
like sappers to undermine an argument, or like boiling pitch to drive a foe from the walls of your case. Belleth begins to purr, his claws sink into the wood, splintering it. Quietly, you and the eccentric slip away, leaving him to preside over the debates like a philosopher king of old. Have fun, buddy. Just one more, and the last one is at the White Well, I think. Yeah, the White Well. Let's get a port report. Observe the people's perpetual protest. We kind of did that. Join the protest. Did that, does that do anything? It gives you a sky story. House of Commons. What is this? Disrupt proceedings with a perfect pangolin. The sessions tend to be droning and dull, but you're provisioned with a pangolin of unparalleled perfection. Hell yeah, buddy. Let's go. You slide into a session and seat yourself in the back, your footsteps swallowed by the slow, sloppy rhetoric of the MPs. How boring. You should remedy this. Discreetly, you lift your perfect pangolin up and whisper to the gleaming nub of her ear. She salutes, beautifully of course, and races away to interrupt the funerary drivel. Funerary drivel, rather. As expected, the perfect pangolin performs exquisitely, exciting the session to astonished conversation. The two of you are quickly evicted, although not before you're, you've glutted yourself on gossip. That's amazing! Man, I wish I had opportunities for the dog. The dog that's just way too big. Salon stewed gossip. Visit my department. Make a new law. I do have a will of the people. All right, let's fail at this again. Mm, I think people told me that skill checks that use your skills. Well, that's kind of redundant. Options that use your skills are more effective than options that use something like a tale of terror. So let's try veils. Actually, even hearts would do. Sure, let's do hearts. Surprisingly, it's 100% chance of success. Wait, my bill still has no support? Okay. Weird. Dig up dirt. Fifth of Parliament. Time to clear out the competition. Third of Parliament. Seek a celebrity backer for your bill. Half of Parliament. Intimidate the backbenchers. <laughs> Half of Parliament. Is that the last one again? That's the last one again. Another 50-50 basically. My first success ever. Your proposed law is fiercely contested by the House. Fortunately, as nobody else has actually read it, none can give particularly cogent arguments against it. When the dinner bell goes, even its archest critics are happy to vote for it if it'll get them to the dining room before the sausages are all gone. All that remains is to take it to the throne of ours, where the Empress will choose whether or not to grant it her royal stamp. As you file out of the house, you see one of the First Secretary's clerks watching. She nods her head approvingly. Your status in Parliament is clearly on the rise. Every time you successfully pass a law, the House of Commons becomes wiser to your tricks. Succeeding will get harder each time. Head out and gather another example of the will of the people to begin passing a new law. Due to your performance, you're assigned a new department. Cool. So it said I have to take it to the throne of ours, huh? To the Empress. So they can give it their stamp. I don't think the Empress likes me very much. <laughs> We've talked with them once before. Anyway. Ask about the will of the people? I mean, I've already done that before. Like, I don't even know where I've gotten the will of the people from and where I haven't at this point. 
What's my new department? I guess it doesn't matter, does it? The only thing that would matter is if I've been given the key to the House of Lords or the Victoria Tower, but I have not. I just want to make sure there's nothing else I can do now that I've very, very slightly moved up. Like, for secretary, do you have anything to tell me? Nah. Okay. I think that's it for this place. Okay, there's a whole group of unexplored things here. I'm hoping one of them might be the Well of the Wolf. So let's start exploring them. This one's a curator. Hello! Ooh, I hear something over there that sounds rather well like. Oh, I can go over that. I thought thought that was on the same level as me. Reduce terror. Yeah, take a trophy. Ah, shit. Took damage. Is this the well of the wolf? That must be, that must be a well. The Rat Brigade's hair stands on end as you approach the well of the wolf. They refuse to hide, however. Let's go around this thing. Like, circumnavigate it. Is there another sun in here, I wonder? Wait, another sun. No, I was still in Eleutheria mode. There's, this is the only well that we found in Albion. I was thinking the Well of Wonder. Yeah. Whoa, look at that over there. A hole in the sky. Torrents of celestial mist pour into it. Shelves of black ice poke from its throat. One of the shelves extends over the well mouth in a narrow spur. At its end stands a pitted cast iron bandstand. Ooh, to descend. 39% chance of success. Damn, I wish I had the navigator equipped right now for the plus 10 iron. But uh, it sounds like if I fail, it'll just damage my hole, which honestly, that's fine. Let's descend through the gale and land on a shelf of ice. The well wind bays like a dog refusing to leave its master's grave. That, oh man, that's a disturbing simile. Your driver wrestles the raising, rising winds. Oh, success. Your engine bucks like a dying pig. Its hole groans. Gritty black particulates clatter at the windows. With a last lurch, your locomotive crunches onto the grimy ice. Your driver exhales. A good landing, not a gentle one. When you emerge from your engine, the winds push at you like a schoolyard bully. The cold bites. Beyond the lip of black permafrost, the well-mouth gapes wide enough to swallow worlds. Away from the edge, a cluster of hexagonal cave mouths perforate an icy cliff face. The yellow eyes of devils gleam inside them. Hexagonal cave mouths. Hmm.
Wait, what is this? You unlock this by having no useless cats. Give me that useless cat. Oh my god. There's something inside the well. Whatever it is, the devils would like it gone. Please. Aww. The devils trail you to the lip of the well, their faces weighted with expectation. Something is yowling plaintively from the abyss, something mortal and odiously off-key. You go on your stomach and lean over the edge, a hand thrust into the void. For moments there is nothing, nothing but the noise, nothing but the cold and the sense you'd profane something sacred. Then your fingers brush against fur. Surprised, perhaps, by the contact, the beast bites down on your palm and retreats. Ouch! This wasn't how it was meant to go. Again. Yes! With considerable effort, you extract a round-bellied, snaggle-toothed, long-clawed lump of a cat. The devils are relieved at your success and insist you depart with the aggrieved feline as soon as possible. Hey, buddy. Are they a uh, mascot as well? Probably. Before we do the repentant devils thing, let's just learn more about this place. Approach a stone idol. A large fragment of sky rock has fallen here. It has been graven, by the wind or by long-forgotten tools, into a bulbous shape, perforated by holes of different sizes. It moans, it whistles. Mm, from all the wind blowing through the holes. The shapeless idol looms over you. Someone has scratched jagged teeth around each of its holes, transforming them into many, many mouths. A heavy hook is affixed into the stone just higher than you can reach. While at the base of the idol, two depressions have been dug into the ice. The first holds a knout with hooks knotted in its thongs. The second holds a buckled strap of something like leather. So this is a well, right? What does this one do? This increases your hearts at the cost of your iron and mirrors. No thanks. Approach the bandstand. A spur of ice juts precipitously over the well. At the end of it sits a bandstand worn by the wind. There the devils sing their hymns. The journey to the bandstand is bleak and exposed. The well waits on either side. If you look down you imagine movement in its caligonous depths. A temptation wells in you to fling yourself from the ice and into the abysm. You avert your eyes swiftly. The thing in the well begins to howl, and the winds scurry in search of kinder spaces. It's a hollow, keening sound, the distress of something that can't believe it still has more to lose. The ice groans miserably. Watch a well song. You lack the tools to decipher the meaning of the hymn. Yeah, let's, let's watch. The devils struggle out in their wasted finery, out into the teeth of the wind. In a trudging line, they make their way to the bandstand. The devils mount the bandstand and begin to sing. Their lips are motionless, their mouths hanging slackly open. Buzzing plain song pours from their throats. The notes are scattered across the scale, creating only a tenuous harmony. Slowly, they begin to shuffle in what might be a dance. Its movements are performed only with the feet. Are they drawing an alphabet? Hieroglyphs? The well's wail drowns them out, but they persist. After some time, the well begins to waver. The wind slackens. Slowly, over the course of another hour, the well returns to quiescence. The devils, wearied, go back to their caves. So they were soothing. Whatever's in the well, probably the sun. What was Albion's sun called? I have that in my notes. It's called the Hour King. 
and uh, oh, I've got this little bit here about the Hour King. Examining it through a microscope, it's immediately apparent that the son of Albion wasn't killed by munitions, but by poison. It has worked its way into every golden cell. The poison itself you cannot isolate or extract. It's as insubstantial as a thought. You examine it more closely. The pattern of its the patterns of its spread are regular, like the strokes of a pen. Mm, the lines look like fragments of correspondence sigils, don't they? Can words be poison, I wonder? The devils are using a dance alphabet in their services. Perhaps you could learn it? Ooh. Decipher some of the dance alphabet of the devils. What does that take? A savage secret. Mode of inspiration. Searing enigma. Yeah. Fortunately, you have the presence of mind to take sketches of the steps the devils performed during their last service. Serpentine semiotics. Or semiotics. Returning to your engine, you spread your sketches across your bunk and instruct your crew that you are not to be disturbed. You have learned a great deal in your travels. You are sure the patterns of the Devil's Dance are a crude form of correspondence. The hymn itself, you think, is only inflection. By morning, you've assembled enough of a foundation to decipher the Devil's next service. Ooh. And I'm doing all of this without even speaking with the Devils. I probably should speak with them, huh? Let's speak with them before I do anything else there. Speak to the Congregation of Devils. They emerge, curious from the caves. Once they were dapper and pinstripe or delicate in brocade, now they wear rags. Their brocade is frayed, their pinstripe faded to porridgey gray. You ask about their lives here. Silence. When you persist, one steps forward and opens his mouth as wide as he can. Plain song emerges. Sweet with a sonorous drone. The devil's lips and tongue aren't moving. The song is coming from deeper in his throat. You stand on tiptoes. The devil leans obligingly forward. You peer past his tongue, his tonsils, his gullet, and see a large, compound eye, insectoid, iridescent, peering back at you from his chest cavity. The devil steps back. That is all for now, it seems. What the fuck? An insectoid compound iridescent eye. Okay. So they can't talk anymore. Let's go back to the bandstand. <clears throat> Investigate the bandstand. The bandstand is made from cast iron, modestly curlicued, and pitted by the harsh weather. You find the manufacturer's mark and date. The components were wrought in the promised days just after London arrived in the heavens. While inspecting it, you feel the weight of the numberless fathoms below you. They pull at you. Perhaps, as a child, you dropped a stone down a less terrible well. Perhaps you listened for the sound of it striking the bottom. Now you imagine yourself as that stone, falling and falling. So how do I view another performance by the devils? Do I have to leave and come back, I guess? I think so. Well, let's help the repentant devil look for what he seeks. There was someone he wanted to find somewhere in one of these caves. In body, she is an older, even motherly deviless. She says nothing to him, though it's plain she recognizes him with pleasure. He, for his part, sits with her a long time, telling stories of the Iron Republic, of London as it used to be, of Parabola. He talks the way one might at the sickbed of a beloved unconscious patient, as much for one's own comfort as for theirs. At last he runs out. How did you ever reconcile yourself, he says, to giving up the work? She doesn't answer. Before he can go, she offers him a document on papyrus, sealed with wax.
help him sympathize with her or help him direct his rage. Help him sympathize with her. I do not understand, he says again and again on the way back down the cliff. Once she was an unstoppable force. Perhaps she has grown tired, he allows. Perhaps she is gathering her strength again. I suppose that would be an understandable response. The repentant devil has become more inclined to withdraw from the world. Hmm. Well, I can't speak with him right now. Back to the bandstand for a second? No. Okay, let me try just leaving and then just coming back immediately. To go back down. Wow, success twice in a row. I think I just have to wait actual time. Yeah, we just gotta come back later. Hmm. Well, in the meantime... Let's get just a little bit away from it so it's not so ear-shatteringly loud. Let's go check out the Bully's Acre. Pay my respects. Failure. Hurt my hole, but it did actually reduce my terror. Don't hit the coffins. Don't hit the... Hey, curator. What's up? Did that go to me? I'm not sure it did. Alright, let's speak with him. What is all this? Ask more about rebelling against the judgments. Ask me about the state of your soul. Talk about the Baroness. I think some of these things we've done, but some of them we haven't. Assemble the devil's evidence. Three documents lie on the table, ready to be deciphered and translated from the infernal tongues. Three panes of stained glass. I've only got one. Man, we can do a lot with them right now. Agree to a private rendezvous? Wait. Wait a minute. Hold on. Allow him to distract you from the unhappy topic of the well of the wolf. He's in the mood for something more carnal than conversation. He says he is curious whether old skills hold. Does the devil want to fuck me? Let's not do that. Um, ask more about rebelling against the judgments? Have we done that before? It was a waste, the repentant devil says. The protests, the peaceful fights, and the violent ones. We were never likely to win by those methods. You wait. Control what something consumes, he says, and you control what it is. The feeding of stars is a delicate art. I had spent centuries in cultivating them, studying their palates, watching for evidence of their responsive growth. I had influence. Now, how much can any devil say the same? Okay, yes, you're super cool, but also, that's a really good idea. What the hell do they eat? Can we poison their food? I think we've already debriefed among Kirillin. We did that a long time ago. What the? Am I, hold on, am I doing something wrong? Why does the dialogue keep ending? Debrief. Onwards. No, just for some reason, instead of taking me back to the beginning of the tree, here it just stops. Yeah, I think I have to do this one. Assembling the devil's evidence. Three panes of stained glass. Okay. Well, let's go back to the, the bank. I think I have 
More stained glass in my bank. Turns out I only had one extra pane of glass in the bank, making for a total of two, and I need three. But the Most Serene Mausoleum exports panes of glass. It's a tend to funeral. Um, miser's funeral? That lowers some tear. Port report. Memorial to the Prince Consort. Let's use some uncanny specimens to lower my tear by quite a bit. Contemplate the dead sun? I know that raises tear by quite a bit, but I forgot what it gives me. Vision of the heavens. Ah. Ooh, thirsty bombazine. Well, let's get the glass. Um, I'm going to use up three panes. I want to have at least one pane on me all the time. So, I don't know. I'll get like three. Store a couple in the bank and whatnot. Assemble the devil's evidence. Three documents lie on the table, ready to be deciphered and translated from the infernal tongues. Some words are visible only in the right light. It takes some hours to sort the matter out, but it becomes clear in the end. I have the measure of my attacker now, he says. If I were a younger devil, I would even be flattered. My old abilities are in demand. The son of the Blue Kingdom has put out a reward for the first person to kidnap me and bring me under guard to Sky Barnet there to assist in the service, uh, service of its appetites. Ooh. The fucking sun did it. Hmm. That is quite the flattering thing. Assist in the service of its appetites. And what do they mean by that? Do they mean they're going to be its personal, like, chef in a way? Or just that they're going to be eaten? Hmm. Let's see. Offer him safe haven aboard. Offer him passage to his new home at Sky Barnet. Offer to drop him off somewhere safe for retirement. Well, that would be boring. Plus, I don't think they would even want to, you know? They're not tired yet. They don't want to retire yet. And I'm definitely not going to put them in service of the judgment. Offer him safe haven aboard. Who cares what judgment is looking for him? He belongs here with you. He has tried everything but rebelling against the judgments directly. And now, perhaps, it is time. Now, of all times, perhaps it's possible to take action and have some hope of winning. That sounds amazing. This person is this person's officer quest is perfect for me. What do you got in mind, buddy? Oh, I think it just like basically ends the officer quest, and I guess whatever else you do will have to be the thing to uh fight the judgments directly that's a very short quest it feels like make his status here permanent I suppose who would he like to be if he's free to travel with you this will transform the repentant devil into the defiant devil a signaler who increases your veils by 10 and your affiliation with academia by 2 heck yeah Subtlety, scholarship, room for his library. You offer him room to experiment, freedom to travel, protection as much as you can offer from the interference of any further agents of the Blue Kingdom. Either he is touched or he has the tact to pretend that he is. At any rate, he accepts. How many officer quests have we finished? Finished, 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 finished. Finished, finished. Everybody except the feline eccentric. Hmm. 
Oh, yeah. The useless cat, which is not useless at all. I mean, come on, look at it. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's yawning or screaming. He is not good. He falls off high things. He gets stuck in vents. He sits at the exterior hatch and yowls to be let out. He's yours, though, you suppose. <laughs> the cat sleeps in the hold, in the engine room, in the galley. It's often found asleep, never seen expending energy moving from one place of repose to another. Today, it's sleeping on your desk. Stroke the cat. Perhaps it will be relaxing. It was not relaxing. For something so lethargic, it has a remarkable turn of speed. Its soft white belly was a trap. Your useless cat yawns theatrically, as if to emphasize exactly how little it cares about the blood oozing from your forearm. It stands, stretches, knocking a pot of ink to the floor, then curls up once more. The ink pools lazily. You'll need to mop that up before it reaches the rug. I love that cat. So can I not do anything else with you? Can I ask him about Caduceus when I get a portal board from there? If I have a caged Corister bee, you could ask him about that. But yeah, not like questy stuff. Um, do I want her the the Defiant Devil instead of the signal or ten mirrors? Ten veils, no, I, I need the mirrors to get up to seventy five mirrors. But if I ever need academia, that'll give me a huge boost. <laughs> 